Hi Mike's carburetor parts. We're going to rebuild a nice and two barrel carburetor. Uh, this one happens to fit a Corolla. And uh, first we're going to take it apart. And let's start by uh, uh, taking this fuel line off. Now remember that there's a gasket. These happen to be copper. It goes on each side of this uh, bolt. Put it over there. Uh, take plenty of pictures with your camera as you go along. Taking off the pump rod here. You know, if you take a lot of pictures, if you have a question down the road, um, then we can leave this on for now. Um, anyway, you got questions down the road, you can refer back to your picture. Okay. Uh, in here is your clean out plug and there is a small brass type filter in there uh, you want to get it out and clean it real good don't think you can buy those so be sure not to lose it if you don't have it then put an inline filter on it either way will work okay so one other rod we need to take off to get the top off is this here this is the uh, fast idle rod and um, save all your little clips that you take off. Uh, our kit has the clips in it, but uh, they're easily lost. So if you save your old ones just, just for emergencies, um, just for emergency sake, uh, you won't have to wait trying to order one or find one and some of these little parts you just can't find okay so to get this off see this is in the way just close your choke part way until it clears the horn and then it'll come out it's got this little uh, uh, two tits on the end for uh, taking it off on that end okay so we got the uh, everything off we need I think to get the top off so we'll start taking the top off this is the uh, they call it I think an auxiliary piece and basically it's just where the fuel goes into part of the fuel it has a gasket on it again save all your old parts in case you have questions later can't tell you how many times I hear somebody say they threw all the parts away and then uh, before they even got the kit in the mail and then they found out something wasn't in the kit and etc. So, you know, just watch yourself. Okay, so there's your accelerator pump in the top. And okay, let's take a, the top apart. This will take the float out. This is a nitrofill float. There's the float pin. And we'll take it off. Do not soak this. Um, just leave it dry. Let's take the uh, well. Let's take the needle out. By the way, when you're taking this apart, don't turn this upside down because stuff is going to fall out of it, and we'll get to that in a bit. Okay. So there's the old needle. It has this little spring-loaded thing in the top. That's used for like off-road stuff. Uh, you don't necessarily need it. I don't remember how the kit comes right offhand. Take the seat out. Okay. Remember, there's a little gasket on it. Um, it make sure there's not one left. Now we'll take the power piston out. And uh, like a so. Let's look at something here. Yeah, this was actually on wrong. When this is uh, goes back on, you put it on like that. Okay. There's a spring, return spring on the power piston. You need to have in there for sure. Put a little retainer away. 
And uh, the other thing we need to do is uh, get the auxiliary pump off here. Let's see if I got a socket that'll fit. There we go. Always use sockets if you can. This wind bolt I didn't uh, loosen before I started this. I loosen most things uh, so I don't have to fool with it too much. And that just comes out like that. And then this pulls out. Okay, take your boot out. Oop, that one just ripped apart. You don't want to soak any rubber. Anyhow, I'm going to take the gasket off. Uh, that's going to be ready to soak. We're going to soak it in simple green uh, for a couple of hours. Be careful, this is aluminum. If you soak too long, it's going to discolor. There's a return spring in here for the uh, accelerator pump. So get that out. And then uh, you need some very small needle nose, very skinny, to get down in this hole. Because at the bottom, there is a clip. Okay, there's a clip. And then there's a check ball underneath. There's a check ball. fish the clip I got it loose and then uh, it's stuck down there there we go so there's the clip it's a spring-loaded clip don't lose it you need it to keep that check ball in place my guess is chances are the check ball will stay there anyway now reason I tell you not to turn this upside down is you got right here in your main discharge you got a check weight and a check ball it goes in this hole right here all right that's your discharge so when you pump the gas this is where the gas fuel is going to come out and there's the check weight, probably weighs less than a gram, and there's a small, excuse me, the large check ball. Um, there's a large check ball, and there's a small check ball. See the difference? The big one goes in this main discharge, and the small one goes in the hole in the well underneath the accelerator pump. If that well is not smooth inside, uh, uh, polish it until it's smooth okay you need the accelerator pump needs to uh, glide in there easily uh, this one happens to be a leather uh, when I go to put it back in I'm gonna do something like this to make sure that uh, the seal is broken on the outside sometimes the manufacturers will seal it with uh, something and coat it and uh, for uh, shelf life and you need to break that seal then add a couple of drops of oil uh, just to the uh, leather part. Just two drops. You don't need to soak it or anything. Alright, we're going to take the primary Venturi off. Keep in mind we're, when you got two of anything, which side they go on. Okay, there you go. There's your motion tube, um, and you got a gasket right there. That's what the gasket looks like. So that's the primary. And I'm going to check, but I don't think you can get these mixed up. I think they'll only go one way. That is with most carburetors. No. See, that's not going to go down in there. It's just not going to work. So. Uh, the primary and secondary you can't get mixed up. Okay, get the gasket off. You know, get be sure all the old gaskets off, um, so that uh, when you put it back together, it's not holding something up. Now here's your discharge uh, tube right here. It's very small. Uh, you want to be sure blow air through it. Make sure that's open, or you're going to have trouble. Now you have an idle jet down in here takes a very thin screwdriver get it out like so alright and that's another real small one so you want to be sure that's real clean blow air make sure air blows through uh, all the way through alright let's take the jets out your main jet down here
Okay, there is a washer underneath it. We take our secondary jet out. Don't think you can buy these jets. Don't lose them. Be sure you mark them. So they go in the same uh, place. This is a secondary jet. This one's more of a silver color. Goes right there. Your primary is brass colored. It goes uh, over here. Uh, there are sizes stamped on them. And uh, let's see, 75 looks like on this one. And uh, what's this one say? Yeah, I can't tell. 214 or 114, something like that. Anyway, the 75 we know goes over here. So we're going to mark those with something, uh, just so we know which is which. Uh, you may not remember. So, last thing in here is to take the power jet out. And I think this uh, will fit it. So these are metric, and I think I'm take, using a uh, 12 millimeter, 9 millimeter. That's a nine millimeter. Okay, get it out. No gasket on that. Keep that in mind. That one does not have a gasket. Okay. These don't take it apart. Just be sure it's real clean. You're not going to be able to find these, so uh, don't damage it. All right. So that takes care of everything in here. Uh, you got a little uh, jet right here. That does not come out, but be sure it's clean. Blow through it. Make sure you get air all the way through it. Now let's take off the uh, throttle body. Now, I generally, don't take off all of the uh, all of the shafts and whatnot unless unless it's corroded or something. You have to. Uh, they're just the pits to try and get back in. These screws easily break. I don't even know if these are available. If you have to take it off, grind the back of the screws, and because they're mushrooms usually, and then they'll come out uh, easier. But just for cleaning purposes, leave them alone. Okay, that's uh, the two on top. There's two on the bottom. Two big ones. One is slotted and one is not. The slotted one goes towards the float ball. Or excuse me, the hollow one. One is hollow and one is slotted. Okay. There's the slotted. And this other one is a hollow one. probably used as a uh, vacuum source so uh, be sure you put that back in the right way or you'll have trouble see that one's hollow and it's got a hole through it okay get the lock washer out so there we go we got that apart and uh, we're going to take this off this is the ASS valve got something to do with the smog I'm not sure exactly but uh, we probably don't want to soak that it's probably got a diaphragm in it so uh, take it off here
By the way, when I first took this top off, it didn't. It was pretty stubborn. Didn't want to come off. You can see how it tore the gasket here. I took a rubber hammer and just kind of wrapped on the side of it. Be careful you don't hit something like this because that'll break off. And then you'll be in trouble. And uh, and then it came loose. Okay. So there you go. That's off. And then we'll take the uh, idle mixture screw out. When you put it back together, you uh, turn it in uh, all the way, gently seat it, and turn it out two turns. And then you uh, finish uh, fine tuning it after the engine's warmed up and running. Uh, just check to make sure the end isn't scored. If somebody uh, tightened it too tight, that might be scored. And then you're going to have to try and find a new. Uh, uh, screw. And that may not be easy. You may have to get them off a used carburetor or something. Alright, so that's the only, as far as I'm going to take this. Okay, because this is very complicated and uh, it should just clean up just fine without having to take it all apart. If you got a whole lot of corrosion or anything, you might be thinking about getting a different carburetor. Okay, so that's, there you go, that's how it works. So that's taken apart. We're going to get it soaked and uh, you can use something like simple grain for a couple hours. Use a, go to your parts store and get a gallon of uh, dip. Uh, be sure to follow the directions. Like I say, this is an aluminum carburetor and uh, you can discolor the metal very easily if you uh, leave it in too long. This has a little drain or clean out screw right here. Take it out and uh, Let's see, where is it? Right here, you may have an anti-dieseline solenoid that screws in here. You see, this one doesn't have one. It's not tapped for the threads. And uh, like I say, that's it's anti-dieseline so that when you let off the gas, uh, it's not going to diesel on you. Or when you turn the key off, rather, it won't stay running. And that's what that is. So take that out if you uh, have one. Okay, there you go. So let's soak it and then we'll come back and put it all back together.